Here to introduce Mayor Ed Lee is Executive Vice President and Regional Banking President for Wells Fargo, our title sponsor today, uh, Michael Belechi. Uh, Michael is responsible for Wells Fargo, San Francisco Bay Area region, 2,600 team members, 139 bank stores or branches, and more than $31 billion in deposits. Michael is a longtime uh, Bay Area resident, focused on the Bay Area economy. Wells Fargo is leading the way. Please help me uh, welcome to the stage Michael Belechi. Michael. Thank you, Steve, and good morning, everyone. It's my great pleasure this morning to introduce our next speaker, Mayor Ed Lee. Since taking office in January, January, Mayor Lee has made tremendous progress in a very short period of time. He's been dedicated to preserving San Francisco's dynamic workforce and the creation of new jobs, which I know is very important to everyone in this audience. He's committed to affordable housing and education and worked diligently to close the budget deficit. His experience and dedication to San Francisco are irrefutable, having spent over 22 years in public service. At Wells Fargo, we share the mayor's commitment to San Francisco. We are one of the oldest companies doing business here for 160 years. We're the largest private employer and one of the top corporate philanthropists in San Francisco. Wells Fargo, the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce, are honored to have him here today. Please welcome Mayor Ed Lee. Good morning. Good morning. All right. This is great to be in the city of San Francisco because we are doing everything right. And, you know, I know they only gave me 10 minutes this morning. I can probably talk for hours about what we're doing in our city to make sure it's economically strong. But if I've only got 10 minutes, then it's going to be about jobs, jobs, and more jobs. That's, with, that's what we have to do in this city. You know, I, uh, I want to speak on the state of our city's economic uh, climate. And in order to have a city that is, as you've heard me say time and time again, a city that's safe, that's solvent, and that's successful, we need to invest in our residents, in our businesses here, and in our city. And that's why jobs and our business climate in our city are the top priorities that my administration will continue to push very, very hard. That means creating and retaining jobs and creating the conditions for businesses to start and to grow and to prosper in our great city. You know, today, San Francisco's unemployment rate is 9%. And while that's the third lowest in the whole state, we can still do better than that. In fact, I'd like to turn that nine right on its head to a six, because that's where we need to be right from the start. The good news is that San Francisco is resilient, and we've proven that we can compete and we can win businesses even in the most toughest economic times. We're home to over 550 technology companies, 74 life sciences companies, and more than 200 clean tech and green businesses. So our growth is very, very steady. And that's why I'm happy to be here this morning to share this stage with Wells Fargo and the Chamber of Commerce. And again, to compliment uh, Wells Fargo, because I see them all over our city, along with many members of our chamber, being the great philanthropic efforts that they're doing, along with creating businesses and jobs. And that's what being in San Francisco is all about. It's not just about making money. It's also about how you use that money to improve lives in our city. And that's been my philosophy as a non-politician, is to make sure that everybody's investment, there's not only a return on that, but that investment is also in the quality of life for people in the city. So I will continue making growth and success of our technology industry to be my top priority. Central market payroll tax exemption. That's a first. That's what we've done this past summer. We passed that on central market in April. And now look at Twitter. They're spending their 15 million on top of Shorenstein's 80 
million dollars to retrofit the furniture mart. That's how, and the permits are already being drawn so that you have the anchor right in front of you being created on Central Market. We passed the stock options tax exclusion. And with working with the board again, uh, just like we did for the payroll tax exemption, working closely with the board of supervisors and make sure they all understand the value of making sure that our technology companies have a chance to grow in this city and making sure that we don't punish job creation and making sure that the stock options was something we paid attention to, that, that all these companies that are turning the corner on their growth have a chance to succeed. We are meeting with our CEOs of our technology companies. Every other week, I've got a meeting with one of these CEOs and sitting down with people like Mark Benihoff and Jack Dorsey and uh, you got a new name, Mikhail Zvain. You know who Mikhail Zvain is? He's the, he's the CEO of uh, Zendesk. And we just opened their office up on 6th and Market just last week. And as they opened and as they announced that they're growing from 80 people to 150 by the end of this year, they're the very first company to take uh, exact advantage of applying for the payroll tax exemption on mid-market. And then they hear almost on the very same night, two nights later, that Mikkel joins uh, Mark Benihoff in raising funds for the new UCSF Benihoff Children's Hospital. And Zane donates, he donates a million dollars just that night to add to the four million that Benihoff has raised already for a hospital. That's a wonderful contribution to our city. The commitments that are being made from uh, the tech companies to be part of this great city uh, serve as an economic foundation for our whole approach to welcoming technology companies. In addition to Twitter and to Zendesk, we've got uh, Autodesk. Carl Bass, I was just there meeting with him. And I'm gonna meet with Carl Bass every six months because every six months, I think he's gonna do another 25 to 35,000 square feet expansion on one market plaza, one marketplace. Uh, he wants to expand. Uh, the product that he has with the AutoCAD and the new three-dimensional uh, use by literally everyone in entertainment industry and as well as the building industry is making that product completely successful. That adds to uh, Zynga and to Mozilla and all the other tech companies that are moving in. And so I'm committed to making sure that San Francisco remains as a leading center of our tech industry and we're still getting it done. Of the 4.6 million square feet of office space that was leased in the last uh, eight months in 2011, 1.6 million square feet of office space was leased by technology firms alone. These include Twitter, Zendesk, Autodesk, Dropbox, Mozilla, and Kabam. Kabam being, uh, along with uh, uh, Zynga, uh, the growing uh, social gaming uh, companies that are moving into their city and creating jobs. Tech is also an important driver in our economy, not only uh, with the technology companies that are moving in, but also the biotech, the clean tech, and the retail. And in fact, if you heard yesterday, uh, it was really neat to open up the very first of uh, a company that is using uh, again, arts to help build uh, uh, their business, and that was Heath Ceramics. I don't know if you saw that. We opened Heath Ceramics down there in the northeast sector of uh, the Mission area, and 35 employees will start there in a matter of months after they do the retrofit, and Heath Ceramics will be making their uh, decorative ceramics that will end up in, uh, that are already uh, shown up in uh, uh, places like the uh, SF MoMA and some of the uh, very beautiful ceramics that they have to display, but also their dinnerware has shown up in places like uh, uh, Chez Panisse and Slanted Door and some of the other places that are our very first class uh, food industry. Uh, they'll be manufacturing that very clay uh, products and particularly the decorative ceramics right here in San Francisco, hiring uh, 35 employees to do that, that work. Again, uh, in addition to the technology companies and 
some of the blue collar companies that are moving in. We also have, uh, just this July, uh, we introduced and announced China Synergy that are make, that's making in our inner solar, solar conference. In July, we announced they're moving in. A major Chinese solar company firm decided to locate their North America headquarters here in San Francisco. And this marks the sixth uh, China solar firm here, here in San Francisco to locate here. In addition to that, uh, Pfizer Center moved in. Uh, they're occupying 11,000 square feet, but they have committed for the next five years to work with UCSF, the wonderful relationship we're establishing with UCSF. They are committing up to $100 million in joint projects with UCSF. That's Pfizer. Bayer Healthcare, similarly, uh, they're collaborating uh, with their opportunities with UCSF, and they started with their opening of 50,000 square feet here in Mission Bay in the Innovation Center. Tioga, uh, Tioga Energy, a solar development company, again, announced their headquarters move from Silicon Valley to our financial district. And then uh, you may have heard a few months ago, we uh, opened uh, Target at the new Metreon. And in May, I broke ground. Well, actually, I didn't break ground there. I actually took a sledgehammer, punched a hole into a wall. Uh, and it was because that's going to be a project that creates some 1,300 jobs in our city, generating $4.4 million annually to our local economy while bringing in not just Target, but 20 new businesses in that center. And of course, you may have heard that we opened up uh, the second Fresh and Easy store in Bayview. And that uh, uh, started and opened up just uh, the end of last month. And it's their second store. The first one was in Richmond on uh, Clement Street. And these two stores will, of course, serve uh, their communities. But the nice thing about, in addition to their healthy food that they're serving, they are doing the right thing by hiring locally. In fact, the Fresh and Easy store in Bayview, 72% of their employees are San Francisco residents. That's a wonderful contribution to our city. I also want to thank China SF. Because China SF has been uh, something that, of course, Gavin Newsom uh, created his vision. And I also want to continue thanking the great mayor, Gavin Newsom, because he started many of these programs that I get to help make sure they closed out in a successful way. And China SF was one of those great visionary uh, uh, views because uh, it helped us uh, have a direction and help us have a presence in that developing country of China and to make sure that our offices in Shanghai and Beijing were successful in recruiting not only the uh, seven solar companies, the five solar companies that are here in San Francisco from China, but they're part of some 13 companies that have already located here of different industries from China. It really makes sense that we recruit. And at the same time, while locating China companies here to open up their markets and lease our office space and create their outreach and their growth, we are introducing U.S. companies to China in the very same fashion. And we will be announcing uh, a trip shortly, hopefully by the end of this year, if not early next year, we'll bring over a number of great San Francisco, San Francisco headquartered companies uh, to make sure that they meet their counterparts in China. Of course, tourism continues to be are very big, number one. But a lot of the other industries are closing very, very fast for good reason. But still, $8 billion infusion every single year by our tourism industry uh, makes our city very, very focused on this industry. Just this past week, last week, Dreamforce was in town. 40,000 people registered for that convention over four days. They are growing so fast we had to give them Howard Street. And they're going to take over Howard Street yet again next year as they continue to grow. And guess what their economic impact was to the city for that four-day conference? $43 million in four days. And they busted out some 48,000 units of hotels during that time for their guests. And you can see them all over the place. Uh, that was a wonderful contribution, and we're continuing to do that. And that's uh, also a reflection not only of the strong tourism convention that we have, but we are smartly investing in the upgrading of Moscone Center. That's a $55 million uh, decision that we made about a year ago where uh, SMG, our Visitors Convention Bureau, 
our travel, SF Travel Agency, working alongside with uh, the newly uh, formed uh, TDI, the, the uh, Tourism uh, District uh, investment that we have there, raising money to invest in upgrading of, of Moscone Center. And that center had not been upgraded. Now it's got new movable walls, new HVAC, uh, new bathrooms with icons of pictures of all of their, our, our city to welcome in and to make sure the experience continues to be positive. So our tourism sector is set to grow also with America's Cup, 34th America's Cup coming in beginning and actually next year, 2012, and culminating in 2013. And the initial projections show that that event will bring in 5.5 million visitors along with over a billion dollars of economic impact to our city. Uh, we will continue to make sure that America's Cup uh, is focused on organizing on four basic principles. Resource efficiency, environmental sustainability, strategic adaptability, and a positive legacy that whatever we do has a longer term outcome and benefit to our city. Everything from the environment to transportation uh, to moving people around to making sure even the way we pick up trash and the way people behave are going to be long lasting legacies for that. Along the area of development projects, last year, working with the Board of Supervisors, we approved the development of over 5 million square feet of commercial space. 24,000 new units of housing. That combined with all of these projects will bring 14,000 permanent positions and 4,700 annual construction jobs to San Francisco. These economic impacts are in addition to $650 million in public benefits that go towards affordable housing, street improvements, and transportation infrastructures. This unprecedented level of Growth comes from just three projects, Treasure Island, Hunters Point Shipyard, the Candlestick Point, and Park Merced. And as you know, we're making sure that Treasure Island gets built despite the challenges of redevelopment uh, going on in Sacramento, we will make sure that gets done because that means that you'll have 8,000 new homes, 300 acres of parks and open space, and the project will be built on over four phases, but it'll end up supporting 10,000 new construction jobs. In the Hunters Point Shipyard and Candlestick, boy, did we get a great lift last week when HUD and the Neighborhood Choice Program came into town and they announced significantly in reflection of the way we've done this project, the $30.5 million grant from HUD to the Alice Griffith rebuild. That was a wonderful shot in the arm. And that just confirms, again, the Hope SF vision that Gavin Newsom started and I get to help make sure it gets done. Uh, the commitments that were made many years ago with Senator Feinstein and Leader Pelosi and Barbara Boxer and every mayor since that time has made that commitment. We get to see it for life getting carried out with the residents living on that site and working to transform their lives in a positive way. And of course, Park Merced, I think the very first time that we created some increased density on the west side of the city. But guess what? Uh, over 55 new homes, 300,000 square feet of commercial space will be added to Park Merced, completely through private investment and reflective of the faith that we have in that 1,500 rent-controlled apartments will be rebuilt with an unprecedented level of protections to ensure the rights of the existing tenants. That project will prove to be a great project for our city. And at the end of the planning process, the Western neighborhoods could see a significant capital transportation investment, including separating the M Ocean View from the 19th Avenue and extending Muni Mitchell to Daly City Barton. I see Ed Riskin here, he's gonna smile at that because that's gonna be people using public transportation, making sure that we reduce vehicles. I know later on that uh, uh, my good colleague and director of uh, Office of Economic and Workforce Development, Jen Matz, will be speaking uh, later on the program and uh, will be explaining ahead all of the developments in our mega projects. But I do want to give you an update on, on a couple of other things. Redevelopment, as you know, uh, we are as a result of what the state did and 
uh, eliminating, uh, making the move to eliminate uh, redevelopment uh, AB 26 and then uh, asking us, if that was the right word, to contribute. Uh, I think our, our contribution will end up to be about $20 million uh, to reinstate our local redevelopment. Uh, those two, of course, bills are being challenged in court and uh, the, Supreme court, the Supreme Court has indicated in their scheduling process that uh, a resolution of the legality of those two bills will be decided by January of next year. So uh, we have to hold on at this time and all the projects are kind of frozen until that decision has been made. Prior to that, of course, you knew that we fought very hard to protect our redevelopment agent because we did it right in the city and everybody in Sacramento knows that. They know that uh, we built affordable housing uh, we, we, we contributed to schools, to open space, and we created an environment for our private investors to have faith that their projects and their money investments would be protected. We did it all right, and despite that, uh, the governor and the legislature uh, had to do what they did, and uh, we'll, we'll be looking at that uh, very closely and keeping tabs on it and making sure that we align ourselves with whatever the law ultimately will require of us. But we'll keep some form of redevelopment to make sure that we are able and capable of using tax increment dollars for the future because we've done it right and you see all of the development right here in Mission Bay as a result of using tax increment properly. I mentioned earlier that uh, we have been paying very close attention and we will continue to make sure Central Market is redeveloped. And we are revitalizing that. You've seen all the activities that we have. That's the result again, of having a payroll tax exclusion, an economic strategy, working in partnership with uh, a number of different financial institutions as well as different city departments, creating tax increment financing, uh, making sure there's a, uh, a multi-agency approach to a better market street initiative. Uh, that was recently awarded uh, by Caltrans, a $250,000 planning grant to make sure that we continue that effort uh, of uh, forming, uh, through the leadership of DPW, a 15-member advisory committee to keep uh, improving Market Street and consider those ideas to making sure transportation uh, is moving smoothly as well as uh, all the other things that make great streets. Uh, the Central Market Cultural District Loan Fund, $11.5 million uh, to dedicate to small businesses. That's why you see Pearls Deluxe burgers that will open up very shortly because I'm missing a very great hamburger on mid-market and that'll be there along with show dogs is already there. But also attracting new small businesses. Huckleberry uh, Bicycle will be locating there and they're a receiver of our loan packages already and using that advantage as well. And then continuing to work with our whole arena of arts group and recruiting arts to uh, whether it's Burning Man, the Great Arts Foundation, Arts in the Storefronts, our Arts Commission, our Grants for the Arts, everybody is working together to make sure that arts is a great introducer of both businesses and uh, foot traffic into that central market. And that's going very, very well. Uh, because already, as you may have heard when we uh, unveiled the uh, uh, redoing of those old uh, advertising prints on the brick buildings uh, above uh, the original Joe's, we also announced that very same day that while Original Joe's as a restaurant won't come back there, uh, new arts uh, uh, tenants will be in the very same site. Uh, piano fights theater and camera work uh, and then uh, ceramics, underground ceramics will also be there at the same time. So these arts organizations are really helping us lead the way to revitalize that Taylor Street right into mid-market. You will also have a higher degree of safety on mid-market. The substation will be completed by early winter and we'll have a substation that will have uh, patrols of uh, officers to make sure. And then we're gonna work with the community and with Supervisor Kim to recreate the ambassador program there and to make sure that we have additional eyes and ears all along market from 5th all the way to 11th to make sure that people feel safe and are seen safe, particularly during the hours people work. And in these days, when you invite tech companies there, you know they're working till 10 and 11 at night. And all they want to do is uh, walk to the Muni or get on their bikes, and they got the earphones and the iPads out. They're not paying attention to anybody else. So the uh, programming of the arts 
and we will continue working on the UN Plaza, off the grid, the arts festival that are coming up the end of this month into early October uh, on UN Plaza, that again uh, will reflect our commitment to make sure we work closely with the arts uh, programs uh, to revitalize mid-market. Finally, as you know, uh, and we said this at the time when we introduced the mid-market payroll tax exemption, that was just the beginning. I want to continue working with the chamber and all the business groups in the city to make sure that we redo a tax system that has been broken for a long time, and that is the payroll tax system. We need to create a new system and not lose the revenue that we've had, but also not be job punishing. And so in order for us to continue this effort that we started, I want to announce to make sure you know I'm welcoming in all the members of this body here in the chamber to work with us for the next year, to work with the Board of Supervisors and redo our payroll tax system completely. And so we're giving ourselves a year. We want to make sure we get everybody's input. It's going to be very complicated. But again, what isn't complicated in San Francisco? I want to get past nudity and get into the tax base. Uh, that's going to be the challenge. So uh, this is a summary of everything that we're doing. I know Jen's going to go into a lot of other detail, but I want to just give you a touch of overview and to make sure you know that as long as I'm in room 200, I'm going to be about job creation, about making sure people's investments here have a return and that people have faith in the city. This is still a great city. And walking together with Senator Feinstein to the White House, we had that long talk about how great the city was when she redid that investment in the cable car system, uh, used the whole compassion of the city to rebuild our city, making sure that we recovered from Loma Prieta. Well, we have the same challenge in front of us. And I want to make sure you know that every day, my commitment will be to make sure people's investments, whether it's the families that they created here, whether they bought a house that's more expensive than any part outside of maybe New York, or whether you invested in a small business or medium-sized business, or you're part of a larger investment, or whether you want to tap the great workforce that we have here, we need to make good decisions in this city. We need the focus and the concentration on economic stability. We need job growth and we need job creation. That's what I'm in about, and you have my 100% commitment to do this every day I'm in the office. Thank you very much.